Okay, so we're talking about absolute value today. Free calculus uh, 20, this is chapter 7, the start of chapter 7, and 7.1, absolute value. So I have a picture here, and this is in your textbook. I just clipped this from the textbook. This is the Delta Besborough Hotel in Saskatoon, yay, yay Saskatoon. I know I'm living in Regina, and uh, I'm not supposed to like Saskatoon, but I went to university at the U of S, and really enjoyed Saskatoon. It's a great place. Uh, spent some time in and around uh, the Bez here. And this picture, obviously one uh, picture, it's taken from the same spot, uh, but one picture is in the summertime, and one picture is taken in the wintertime. Obviously, we know this, and we have quite a temperature change here in Saskatchewan. And so, what can we take from this? Well, I'm going to suggest that it's quite possible that this picture on the left was taken when it was 30 degrees above zero. It's quite possible. Now, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to say it's 30 degrees above zero. This one over here could quite possibly be, and just for, um, you know what, actually I'm going to change that. Let's, instead of 30, um, this, is, this, is, this could be 30, but this, I wanted to say this was negative 30, like 30 below. But there's a problem with that. Why is this probably not 30 below? Anybody see? Yeah, the water's not frozen over, okay? So this is a river. Yeah, it's, it's pretty speedy. I mean, does it freeze over? You know, for the most part, um, there should be a lot more ice if it was minus 30, okay? So let's say, let's say that this one was probably not positive 30. Let's say this was, uh, you know, 20. I'm going to say 20, okay? So 20 degrees. This could be negative 20 degrees. Now, why am I stuck on the same number? Because absolute value talks about, okay, listen very carefully, it talks about um, a magnitude or a size or a distance on a number line instead of positive and negative. No. So here's what I'm saying. If I were to draw, and I'm, I'm helping, you know, I'm helping my, my daughters with negative numbers right now in elementary school. And so we, I always refer them back to the number line. So you remember the number line, right? The number line goes forever to the negative direction and forever to the positive direction. But somewhere in the middle there, there's zero, right? So we're going to put zero right in the middle of our number line. So positive 20 is on this side over here. These pictures are reversed, I guess, a little bit. But negative 20 would be over here. All right? So the positive 20 and negative 20. Now, what's the absolute value is really referring to the distance away from zero. This is 20 units away from zero. And just like this one is also the exact same, 20 units away from zero. So we talk about absolute value. There's a lot of things in math and in science that absolute value is important for. We don't care whether it's positive or negative. So, um, you know, for example, if we say, what's the difference between your height and my height? Let's say. Well, a positive or a negative difference doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't, it's not required for that. The difference between your height and my height might be 10 centimeters. Okay? A negative 10 centimeters, you would have to know what that negative, like what would that negative mean? That negative would be something like, okay, uh, someone is 10 centimeters shorter than the other. Right? Or if it's a positive 10 centimeters while somebody is 10 centimeters taller than the other, which is true, but the, the fact is, is that when we're talking about absolute value, we, there's a lot of times where we don't care about positive or negative. It's just the, the overall difference or, or the difference in magnitude, okay? Okay, so in your textbook, all right, um, and I'll, I'll invite you to all join me in your textbook, please, not working on anything, anything else, but join me with the lesson here. In your textbook, let's go to some examples. Actually, let's do a um, let, let's, let's maybe bring up the definition here first. Okay, so an absolute value. These little signs right here. This, these little absolute value signs. Have you guys seen these before? Okay, they're like straight brackets. So absolute value is um, shown like this in your textbook, and this is what you'll see absolute value right there. So these little straight straight brackets mean absolute value. And what that actually means is this. The absolute value of A, okay, we're not concerned whether it's a positive A or a negative A. But in a sense, it has both positive and negative included in the definition. So 
what the absolute value of A is saying is that if A is greater than zero, it's the same as positive A. If A is a negative, the absolute value really could be a negative value. So it could be both. It's neither, but it could be both. Okay? So, for example, if we have the absolute value of 2, that is just 2. Okay? So, if A is positive, which it is here, 2 is positive, then it's just A. What about this one? The absolute value of negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is just plain old 7. So how does this definition work? Well, if A is less than 0, which it is, it's negative 7, then this is negative negative 7. The bottom line is, when you apply the absolute value to a number, it basically turns it into a positive, okay? It's always a positive. It comes out as a positive. So that's the first lesson. If you have absolute value of any number, positive or negative, it always comes out as without a sign or, or the same as positive, okay? So absolute value just gets rid of a sign for a regular number. So let's, uh, let's see, in your textbook there... Uh, yeah, let's just take a look at this little diagram here. So on a number line, right, the absolute value of negative 5 is 5 units, because it's 5 units away from 0 on the number line. The absolute value of positive 5 is still 5, because it's still 5 units away from 0 on the number line. So if you think about a number line, um, you won't go wrong. Okay, so there's some examples. Okay, the absolute value of 3 is 3, the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. The absolute value of 9 is 9. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. Okay? So this is all pretty straightforward. I'll get you to kind of look through this uh, if you want. Now, it gets a little more complicated when we're talking about this. And again, this is should be a review for you. Uh, but I'll just go over it anyways. Um, just because, uh, yeah, you may need your memory jogged here. So let's evaluate the following. And we're going to use order of operations, but we're also going to... Uh, include the absolute value parts, okay? So let's take a look here. Absolute value of 4 minus the absolute value of 6. Well, this is easy. This becomes 4. This minus stays. It's not inside the, the absolute value signs. And this n absolute value of negative 6 becomes a regular old positive 6. So the answer is negative 2, okay? So just because you have absolute value signs doesn't mean you can't have a negative answer. Follow along with these examples there, please. Yeah, write them on your paper. Please. Okay, this one here, 5 minus 3. Now, remember, these are treated like brackets. They're kind of treated like brackets. So 3 times the absolute value of 2 minus 7 is negative 5. When I apply these absolute value brackets, that turns that negative 5 into a positive 5. And you can rewrite them just with regular old brackets. So this becomes 3 times regular old 5. So this is 5 minus 15, negative 10. All right. Now C, notice there are absolute value signs on either end. So we're going to do everything inside, just as we normally would, and then at the very end, we've got to keep those brackets. At the very end, we'll apply the absolute value signs. So uh, order of operations say we have to do brackets first. So 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Then order of operations, which is the bed mass. Do you guys remember that? It says we have to do the exponents next. So I'm going to keep those absolute value signs. I have to do this part next. So that's times positive 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, plus 6. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 6. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Again, they're all inside these absolute value signs. So at the very end, you need to apply the absolute value signs, and the answer is positive 2. Okay. All right, so 
Yeah, when we start talking about absolute value functions and expressions, it, it, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. And solving absolute value equations, that's uh, sort of the peak of this. But uh, for the most part, 7.1 is a really simple lesson, just working with absolute values. It's really all that it is. Some of the word problems you're going to run into would be like uh, talking about temperature change and stuff like that, right? The overall change in temperature over... Um, you know, several days. So I'm going to do that real quick example. So what's the temperature? What's the change in temperature? So let's say we have a day that's at uh, 14 degrees Celsius, and then the next day is at uh, 2 degrees Celsius, and then the next day is at negative 5 degrees Celsius, and the next day then is at uh, 8 degrees Celsius. Okay. So two kind of questions we could answer here. You know. What's the overall change in temperature? What are, what's all the temperature changes? Not the beginning from the end, but wh how many degrees did we pass through the whole time? And what you'd be doing is you'd be basically taking a look at, you know, doesn't matter positive or negative. So, for example, if we went from 14 to 2, that is a difference of what? Negative 12. Okay. So we went down 12. Then from 2 to negative 5, what did we do? We went down 7, right? And then from negative 5 to 8, we went up how many degrees? How many degrees? 13, right? Because this is a negative 5 here on the number line. Here's a positive 8. So we've got to go up to 0, and we've got to go up to 8, so 13. So the overall, all of the temperature changes that we experienced, we had a difference of, or we had a change of 12 degrees, we had a change of 7 degrees, and we had a change of 13. And so all of the temperature changes that we went through, um, we actually went through this many degrees if you just add up the absolute values there. Not, not seeing whether we, uh, you know, it was plus or minus. So this would be a 19, it would be 32. So there's actually 32 degrees Celsius in total temperature change there. The beginning from the end, right, if you took a look at the overall change like this, then you would consider plus and then minus, and some of that would be overlapping, and so we'd have a very different number. But the overall temperature change, you know, that's a, that's a question you could use absolute values for. Or what, what are the changes in a stock market um, you know, in a, a certain stock that you have or whatever, if it goes up one day and then down another day and up another day, up another day and down another day, you could figure out the total change by using absolute values. The average change would be the beginning and the end difference. But, okay? Here's the key ideas for this lesson. Uh, take a look at those, and if you see anything in there that you don't understand, please uh, let me know.